Praise the Lord. Are you glad to be in the house of God today? It's so good to see Amanda without her crutch. I just... Good to see Mike today. God bless you. We've been praying for him. Would you mind standing with me just for a moment as we once again go to the Word of God? I know it's getting, it's, it's early enough probably to mention it, but I'm uh, scheduled to do a batch of smoked salmon this week for the picnic coming up. You don't want to miss it. The picnic, I mean. You don't want to miss the picnic. Some of you will slip in and grab some salmon and run. I'll probably open it up at the end of the picnic just to make sure that. Looking forward to fellowshipping with everyone. Uh, we, are, we are on an upswing. There are miracle signs and wonders. People are getting baptized left and right, receiving the Holy Ghost left and right. Things are going well. That's when you always make sure you're cautious. A good friend of mine once said, I think they had 180 people get the Holy Ghost in six months and things were going really well. And he said, I'm just trying to do my best to stay out of the way. And I, I looked at him and I thought, well, you know, aren't you like encouraging prayer and all this? He goes, oh yeah. But he said, I know that if I get involved, it'll mess it up. He's, <clears throat> he said, I don't want to mess it up because this is of God. And if I get involved, then it'll mess it up. And let's do our best to stay out of the way. Don't do anything to distract uh, what God is trying to do. Stay in tune. Stay prayed up. Make sure you keep praying every day. Well, at least we have one person. Praise God, it's better than none that are going to pray. <laughs> Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. I like the Christian education, but I've really been enjoying giving uh, all of our preachers a chance to step to the pulpit. We've been splitting up the services on Sunday and on Wednesday. Uh, the Sunday when I was gone, but on the Wednesday, uh, Wednesdays, it's been great to hear all of the anointed preaching. By the way, I think the uh, this is the weekend. the The Williams are actually on vacation, but I don't. I'm not sure he wanted me to tell you this or not, but it's all right. <clears throat> uh, I'll fix it when he gets home. But his his father in law is not an apostolic pastor, but he is a pastor, and he asked him to preach for him this weekend. So. Uh, I, I said, you know, that sounds good. I said, only under one condition. And he said, what's that? I said, that he allows you to preach whatever the Holy Ghost gives you. I said, if you tell him that, then I'm good with it. I said, we can preach anywhere on the corner. It doesn't matter what. As long as we're not restricted on what God wants us to say. The, the disciples didn't let, they didn't let prisons. They didn't let whips. They didn't let stoning, drowning. All that, they didn't let any of that stop them. They said, how am I supposed to be quiet about what Jesus wants me to say? Uh, I, I, I have a choice whether to please you or please God. And guess what? You lose. I'm going to please him. So I'm just going to go ahead and preach it. So make sure you keep them in your prayers. I pray that something incredible happens at that church probably right now as we, as we go to the word of God. So are they. Matthew 24, verse 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying, giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. It was just a normal day. It was just things were going on as normal until Noah entered the ark. The people, it says, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Judgment came. It was just a normal day, but judgment came. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. 
we get excited about the rapture, but it says two shall be in the field. One will be taken and the other will be left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. One shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered or allowed his house to be broken up. Therefore be also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. It says that there will be judgment. There will also, the Son of Man is coming. He is coming. Then I looked up a scripture, and it just happened to be the scripture before the scripture that I started reading, which I didn't think was a coincidence. In verse 35, he said, Heaven, these are the words of Jesus, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. What he said and what he directed to have written down in his word is never going away. We can't live long enough. We can't get smart enough. We can't outwit God. He said it, and he said, it's going to happen. It's not fun to think that some people may not make it. They may not make it to heaven. It's sometimes we want Jesus to come in our lifetime. I want to go in the rapture. And yet, not today. You know, I got some things I want to get done yet. But it's going to happen. And it said when it happens, it's going to be a time that no man knoweth. Nobody in this room can put an X on a calendar and say, this is when it's going to happen. Because if we could, <laughs> our nature would live the way it wants to live until the day before. Maybe even we would get curious enough to say, God, could you at least let me know what time? Is it going to be in the afternoon or the morning so that I could kind of get ready? But that's why Jesus said, no man knoweth. We can put as many prophecies together as we think we understand and come up with a close assessment if the stars are lined up and Saturn is exposing itself in the eastern sky and <laughs> good luck. Once you do, once you spend all that time, you can spend a lifetime doing that. And God said, no man knoweth. So when you get all done, you can spend 50 years studying it. And God will say, you still don't know. I want to preach on the subject. Believe it or not. Believe it or not. Jesus, touch our hearts today prepare us for that great day of the Lord what we call the rapture the catching away of your bride oh Lord help us be ready help us to be aware of your soon return every day that we live and I pray oh Lord that you would help us to take as many people with us as we possibly can let our arms be full of sheaves, O oh Lord. Not totally exhausted, but just about. God, I pray that you would help us to care about people. Help us to care about this world that we live in. Meaning the people that are in it. And help us to do everything we can to be ready for that day, we pray. In Jesus' name. Everyone said in Jesus' name. God bless you. You may be seated. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. There are some things that our nature would like to change about the Word of God. We read about the blessings. We read about the promises. We read about the miracles. We read about heaven. And we continually in our spirit say, yes, 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 yes. We read about forgiveness. Yes, yes. And every time we get to any kind of judgment, we like to take a leap over that and, or just say, you know, we'll get back to it. We'll study that at a later time. But I know this church and I know what we believe. We strongly believe the doctrines of 
one God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord, he is one. We believe Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. We believe in creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We believe in the power of God. We believe in the absolute <coughs> power of God. We believe in the absolute infallibility of the word of God. We believe in, fallibi- in the infallibility of God in his wisdom and in his power. We believe that the church is the bride of Christ. We believe in holy living. When God said, come out from among them and be ye separate, he meant it. There's a dangerous trend taking root in the religious world. It didn't start today, but it is increasing, intensifying, even as I speak. And that trend concerns me very much. Second Peter said in chapter 3, verse 3, it says, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts. And they're saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. They say, you know, I know what the word of God says, but I know what I've heard preached for 40 years, but you know, I really don't care what the word of God says. This is what I want. This is what I want. It's happened recently. People say, you know, I know what the word of God says, but I, I don't agree with it. I don't agree that that's the interpretation. I'm, who interpreted it? It just says it. It's, you don't need to interpret when it says, repent or die. I mean, would you help me understand that? What, what does that mean? Does that mean I have to repent? Well, you know, if, if you agree. No, like, we, God, doesn't, God doesn't care whether we agree with this or not. He really doesn't care. He's not going to change. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I offend you? Let me change it. I want to, oh, t- everyone turn to page 256 and tear it out uh, because Brother Smet does not like that scripture. God isn't interested in, God doesn't change his word for any. I am the Lord and I change not. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never, I'm not going to change one dotting of an I or one crossing of a T for anybody. Wow, God, that's, that's pretty strong. See, people have seen it happen for a lifetime, and they say, I heard this preached when I was four years old, and nothing has changed. So because of that, I don't believe it anymore. I'm going to find something that's more comfortable. I'm going to find something that's more appealing to my psyche. I want to believe something and then Find a church that teaches what I believe. You know, I got a good answer for you. Go back to the book. I don't care who it is. If it's me, one of these other preachers, don't let them preach opinion. Say, go back to the book. Give me the word. Give me the word. Because you're not going to judge me. You're not going to judge me. I'm not going to judge you. This will judge all of us. So this is what we... Let me show you something. This is what we stand on. I stand on the foundation of the word of God. I don't stand on a doctrine only. I don't stand on a denomination. I stand, oh, oh, I stand on the word of God. Organizations change. Men change. Opinions change. Philosophy change. But the word of God will abide forever. It will never change. Woo! But it said the last day scoffers. That'll never happen. This stuff, in fact, this is all fictitious. It's just a storybook. Wow. That made me nervous even saying that, knowing I was kidding. God, I didn't mean it. Sorry. I was just trying to make a point. There are lots of people who just say, oh, well, it was just interpreted over times and it's changed and probably has no value anymore because it's just man's interpretation and, you know, it's changed it over, you know, just forget it. It's, if man is able to change one word 
and it no longer means what God wanted it to mean, then none of it is good. Who gives anybody the authority to tear out and say, well, this doesn't mean that, and this doesn't mean that, and this doesn't mean that. Just use the scripture to interpret scripture and you'll be safe. He said in that second Peter chapter three, it said, for since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. They said things are the same as they've always been. But then when you do that, when you say, because what has been preached has not yet happened, if you do that, verse 5 is the next scripture. It says, for this, they willingly are ignorant of. They've chosen. I'm going to be willingly ignorant. I don't want to know what the word of God. I've asked some people, may I teach you a Bible study? Nope. I don't want to know what it says because then I'm responsible for what's in there. Don't tell me. Don't tell me what it says in there. They are willingly ignorant of that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. The whole world was covered with water, but the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. He said, I covered the earth once to wipe out sin. I'll never do that again. Whew. Next time it's fire. <laughs> you think that's funny, right? I don't think it's funny. I don't have another one to get on. I, I don't. This is the only earth I have. It's either here or heaven. Jesus, I want to make it to heaven. And when you cover this earth with fire, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be two grinding at the mill and one taking the other left. I don't want to be left here. Someone said, yeah, but the one that's left is, this is the heaven. I'm like, if this is heaven, it's going to be on fire. It's going to be a hot place. We need some good air conditioning because it says the earth is going to be burned up. All the elements there are going to be burned up. I don't want to be here when that happens. There are churches, ministries, and believers who no longer believe in the second coming of Jesus Christ. They don't believe in a place called hell. Hebrews 9 says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Tear that page out. Judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him, Shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation? Unto them that look for him shall he appear. Are we looking for him? He's going to appear again. He's coming back for us. They don't believe he's coming back, and they don't believe in a judgment. Well, God, God is a God of love, and he would never do that. Good luck with that. Just as sure as the sun rose this morning, the second coming of Christ and the judgment will be a reality. Jesus is coming again. The signs point, all the signs point to a soon coming of Christ. The Middle East, Hamas, Hezbollah, Iran with nuclear weapons, Afghanistan, Iraq, North Korea with nuclear weapons, Pakistan with nuclear weapons. They could possibly fall into the hands of the Taliban. Collapse of economies that seemed strong for hundreds of years. United Nations pushing for world court, world military, world currency, etc. Famines, earthquakes, Pestilence, China and Russia trying to expand territories by building islands in the sea and claiming receding ice caps. It, there's, there's a struggle everywhere you look. They're saying, mine, 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 get out of my way. And there's, 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 there's conflicts everywhere. And God said, that's what's going to happen. Wars and rumors of wars. There's going to be people that are saying, you better, you better get out of my sea. You better get out of my, we're not going to do it. Oh yeah, watch this. Whew. Missiles get shot off and... I mean, the whole earth is agitated right now. Why? The Bible says that the earth will be groaning just before he comes back. The earth itself will feel its creator on its way back. He will, the earth will shake and tremble and say, folks, it's not long now. He's coming back. We can feel it. How do I know? Jesus speaks to the wind and waves and they say, yes, sir, we're done. He can speak to the earth. And the wind and waves obey him. Do we really believe that Jesus is coming again? Do we look forward to the coming 
of the Lord? Do we pray for him as in Revelation chapter 2 to come quickly? Even so, come Lord Jesus. He said, I come quickly. That was the last thing he said. And then the word of God says, even so, come Lord Jesus. Would we say that or would we say, you come quickly? Give me a minute. Just give me a minute. Are we living like we believe he's coming again? Are we living like he's coming again soon? Or is it just a fictitious thing? Or has something lied to us and made us act as if If he comes, it will probably be just before I die, when I'm 92. I mean, that's automatic what we feel. It, you know, he's not going to come until I, until I'm old enough, until I've lived a full life, and then it could be before I'm done preaching. It could be. Are we ready to go? Oh, now he's scaring. No, I'm not. I'm trying to say, don't let the world, the devil, your mother or dad or a denomination convince you that we have until tomorrow because that's a lie. We don't know because no man knoweth when he's coming back. It could be, it could be 150 years from now and none of us will have to worry about it. But that's a lie. We don't know when it is. Are we living like we believe he's coming back? There's an old saying, actions speak louder than our words. If that adage is true, our actions could be saying we don't believe he's coming again. Many believers don't believe he's coming soon. That is a true statement. Many believers. I believe That Jesus is my Savior. Good. He's coming back. Don't believe that. I don't understand how anybody can look at the Word of God and say, I believe that, but not that. And I believe this, but not that. How can we do that? Either it's all true or none of it's true. We have to say, Lord, if you really are my Savior, then you're saving me from something. If you're not, or if you are a Savior, then I have to be saved from something. Otherwise, I don't need a Savior. Many believers act as if they no longer believe in eternity. Many believers don't believe in heaven to gain and a hell to avoid. We may say, I believe. We may even shout when the preacher preaches about the coming of the Lord. I can't wait. Trumpet sounds. The dead in Christ raise up. Out of the ground they come. And we, which are alive and remain, we're caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. What a reunion. We're going to see people that have died long ago, and we're meeting them. They get to go first. They had to die first, I guess. They got something. Let them go first. I don't care who goes first. I just want to go. I just want to be in that number. Oh, Lord, I want to be in that number when the saints go flying in. But our actions simply may not match our words. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. Do you believe in the word of God? Yes. Then why don't we live like that? Why don't we live as though we really believe it? If we really believe in the coming of the Lord, we'll look for his return every day. Walking through the day. Got to do this. Got to... Jesus, it might be today. Oh, I got busy. I got a phone call right when I went to pray, and I didn't pray. Lord, just stop the lawnmower. Let it run if you need to, if you got all the money to pay for the gas, whatever. Just, Jesus, today might be the day. 
If there's anything I need to apologize for, let me apologize. That's why we repent before every service. That's why we have 30 minutes of prayer before every service. Just in case you didn't pray at home, you can come and pray here amongst lots of people of faith. And you can say, I don't even know how to pray. That's all right. Come on in. The fire's hot. You're going to feel the power and presence of God. You're going to feel the anointing of God. Hopefully, we can come to the point where we can offer our sacrifice unto God and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I, I lied yesterday. Lord, I was unkind. I had a bad attitude. Lord, I was covetous yesterday. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. We'll live every day as if he's coming. We'll tell every person who listens that Jesus is coming. We won't care what other people think about us. We'll earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. Which one is that? The only one. How many times do you hear people talk about gospel? Oh, I believe in the gospel. You do? Good. What is that? What? Well, the gospel. There is only one, right? Yes, there is only one. But we'll earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Not what somebody in an arena somewhere came up with because they didn't want to offend you. Well, sir, uh, in an in a interview, we're going to ask you, sir, if you really believe is this sin. Somebody who pastors thousands of people. Do you believe that the Bible says this action is sin? Well, we just need to leave that up to God. You know what my response to that is? We did leave it up to God. He put it right here. Is lying sin? Yes. Yes. Is stealing sin? Yes. How come you're judging? I'm not judging them. I'm just answering a question. Is it? This is what's, what, this is what's answering the question for us. Don't just, well, you can't, I'm not putting them in hell. I'm just saying this is, if it is sin, it's listed in here. If we really believe he's coming back, we'll ignore social and cultural fads. We won't let the world tell us how to live. We won't let them tell us what to do, what not to do. We'll let this give us governing. We'll act and react super or, or scripturally. We'll give more earnest heed to the doctrines of submission, unity, prayer and fasting, and faithfulness. Pray that you enter not into temptation. Well, do I have to pray? Only if you don't want to enter into temptation. Well, that's kind of strong. I didn't say it. He did. He said, if you don't pray, you're going to enter into temptation. Get on your face and pray. Why? To protect you from sin. Oh, okay. What about relationship? You'll develop a relationship as you talk with him. He'll talk to you. You talk to him. He talks to you. Relationship will begin to grow. And then you begin to say, I love you. I'll do anything you tell me to do. I am convinced that if we really believe Jesus is coming soon, we would use more caution to avoid anything that could cause division in the body. God says it's an abomination. You mean if I say something bad about somebody else? That's gossip. That can cause division in the body. God said, I hate division. I hate it because it slows down my progress of the gospel in the world. Don't do that. If you really believe he's coming back, you won't do that anymore. You'll only say positive things. You won't gossip about every little thing you think is true. Even if it's true, don't say it. Give it to him. Give Jesus, I, I didn't mean to hear something, but I'm not going to spread it around because I don't want to hurt people. Because I love you. I want to go to heaven and I don't want to hurt them and offend them and make them miss church. I don't want to offend anybody. Don't tell people gossip. It divides the church. It destroys people. If we really believe he's coming, we won't do that. We give ourselves unreservedly to the work of God and most importantly, we'd win the lost at any cost. If you believe that the person next to you is going to burn forever in hell, well, sorry to pick on you. 
Praise the Lord, brother. That's it. If I really feel like he's going to burn forever, if, if he's not followed the word of God, if he's living in sin, if he's violating God's commandments, and I know it, I'm just going to say, great to see you today. Glad you were in church. Or am I going to say, I, what are you doing for lunch? I'd really like to have lunch with you. I'd like you to come over to my house and I'd, I'd like, you know, I got a Bible study. I would really love to share the word of God with you. I want to draw that person to Jesus Christ. I can't save him, but I can say, here, I want you to meet him and I'm the guy that's in the middle as the bridge. God said, I'm not going to save him unless somebody helps me build a bridge to these people. If God was going to save him without you, what does he need you for? God said, I want you to lead them to me. I want you to teach them about me. I want you to live before them an example of what I believe in. Satan is rocking the church to sleep. He wants us to lose sight of heaven. He wants us to forget about the sound of a trumpet. He wants us to ignore the signs of the end time. He wants us to become numb to sin and the consequences of it. Oh, don't call it sin. Don't say that. I've, I've said that in Bible studies before. And Why are you saying that? Well, because I'm just reading the word of God. Well, I don't really like that word. Of course you don't. I don't like that word when it applies to me either. It, it scared the dickens out of me when I read some things that I was doing in the world were sin. It's like, oh, no, 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 I don't want to do that. Why? Because I know what happens in the end. I don't want to do that. He wants us to love this world more than the one who created it. Don't love the world, neither the things that are in the world. That's what he said. Don't love that. I made it for your convenience, for your comfort. I, I did, but don't love it. He didn't say money was sin. He said the love of money. He said, I don't want you to love it. Don't let it be your driving force. Let me be your driving force and let this take care of your needs. But let your love be for me. Church, we got to wake up. Jesus is coming. He's coming for a church that's looking for him. He's coming for a church that is ready to meet him. He's coming for a church that's hard at work for him. The apostle Paul was certain. The Apostle Paul said, in the moment, 1 Corinthians 15, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump, the trumpet shall sound. What's he saying? It may not happen today, but it's going to happen. He said, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. It's settled in heaven. Jesus is coming back soon. He's coming back soon. The prophecies indicate most of the prophecies for the end time have already been taken care of. They've already been settled. Now it's just a matter of what's going on. My brother-in-law preached a message probably 20 years ago, and he said, based upon all the prophecies in the word of God, Noah entered into the ark. God said, Noah it's time, get in the ark. And they get in the ark, and God closes the door, and nothing happens. Nothing happened. Why are we sitting in here? Because God said, get in the ark, okay? Day two, nothing happened. I don't like being cooped up in here. It's quite restrictive being inside the ark when I could be out there. Spreading my wings. Day three, day four, day five, day six, day seven. In the morning, nothing. Well, I guess let's just go. Let's just get out. It started raining on the seventh day. Okay? What he said was prophecy had fulfilled itself. God said, it's all done. Now get in the ark. We get in the ark. And there was a period of grace. There was a short while of grace. Somebody in seven days probably could have built a ladder. 
somehow build climbing pegs or something, claws to get up on top of the ark. But there was a period of grace. He, he preached 20 years ago. All the, property, the prophecies that I can see, I don't understand them all, but it sure looks like we are in the generation upon whom the ends of the world will come. He said, it sure looks like it. I believe that we are in that short period of grace. I don't know how long it is, but it's a short period. It's already settled. The signs point to it. The church better embrace the fact that Jesus is coming. Many so-called believers no longer believe in hell. Two very prominent television preachers and authors have declared, you can find it on YouTube, they said publicly, there is no hell. Certainly not because the Bible has changed its message. Not because God has changed his mind. But it's because hell is an outdated concept and an inconvenient doctrine. That's inconvenient. It's outdated. Well, that was said a long... How many times has somebody told you, well, you know, that was, that was back in the Old Testament. It's out, what they're saying is it's antiquated. It's outdated. The Word of God is not outdated. And God never intended for salvation to be convenient. He didn't provide a survey for the community saying, if I am going to provide salvation, how would you like me to do it and how would you like to live after I do it? All right, the majority says... We'd like to continue in our sin. We don't want to change. And we want you to take us anyway. By the way, bless us along the way. That's what our nature would want. Okay? Jesus didn't ask for our opinion. Reader's Digest reported the findings of a survey conducted among 10,000 seminary students. They are the preachers of tomorrow. Only 11% of those surveyed believe in a literal heaven. 11%. These are the people that are going to be preaching to the nine and a half billion or whatever there are, seven billion people on the, on the earth. Six percent believe in a literal hell. The indifference in the church concerning hell is a trick of the enemy. If Satan can convince the church there is no hell, he will successfully remove the urgency of reaching a lost world. If we believe that he, Jesus is coming back soon and people who don't make it We'll burn forever in hell. There will be an urgency that's birthed in our hearts that will say, you know what? There's some things that just need to wait till tomorrow because I need to do something about it today. But I'm tired. But I've got all these other responsibilities. Get rid of some and start reaching. Invite people to your house. Invite them to lunch. Do something. Call them. Text them. Reach for them. Cry out on the corner. Jesus is coming. Something is coming soon. If the modern-day church learns to put hell out of its thinking, the church automatically loses its passion for seeking and saving that which is lost. Because if you don't believe in hell, then you don't see a need for reaching the lost. If there is no hell, then let's have some fun. If you don't believe in hell, then what would you be saving people from? If there is no hell, what are we doing sitting here today? What does it matter at all? I've had people tell me to my face, I want to go to hell. <coughs> I didn't say that. Somebody said that to me. I don't want to be misinterpreted. Got it on camera. Uh, it wasn't me. I asked them, why would you want to go to hell? And this was the response. Because all my friends will be there. Let me make this very clear to you and to the world. It wouldn't matter to me if 100% of my friends went to hell. I'm not going there. Not for anybody. It wouldn't matter if my mom, my dad, my sister, my brother, my kids, my wife. It wouldn't matter if they all go to hell. I'm not going. I'm going to do everything I can to make it. And I want to take you with me because hell is too hot. Oh, God. Has hell become a laughing matter amongst us? Should our loved ones be spending eternity in hell be something to smile about? 
How could any believer say, I want to go there? Or my friends will be there. Could it be that we just don't believe in hell anymore? Just as sure as there's a heaven to gain, there is a hell to avoid. If the Bible teaches about heaven, then we also have to believe that there's a hell. You can't say there's a heaven but not a hell. You can't do that. that that's selective. You, you can't. God never gave us a reason. He never gave us the authority to say, I believe in this, but not this. If God preached about heaven, he preached about hell. If he preached about angels, there are also demons. If there are streets of gold, there is also a brimstone path. If there are walls of jasper, there are also walls of flaming fire. If there's gates of pearl, there's gates of hell. If you're looking forward to a place where the sun never sets because Jesus is the light. If you're looking for a place where there is no pain, there is also a place where pain never ends. Heaven is peace without pain, while hell is pain without peace. Heaven is joy without sorrow, while hell is sorrow without joy. Heaven is light without darkness, while hell is darkness without light. Heaven is life without death while hell is ever dying without life. Heaven is laughter without weeping while hell is weeping without laughter. Heaven is prepared place for a prepared people while hell is a prepared place for an unprepared people. A while ago, the news reported in Texas, a house trailer caught on fire. The fire blazed in the middle part of the trailer where the doors were located. Two children slept at one end of the trailer and their single mom at the other end. First, the mother fought the fire, brought her baby out of the trailer. She ran back in and found her little boy and brought him out. By the time she had saved both children, the tips of her fingers were burned off. Her hair was burned off. Her face was charred nearly beyond recognition and her legs were severely blistered. Outside, she fell to the ground with feeble voice and she asked the firefighters if both of her kids would be okay. And when they nodded yes, she died. She gave her life in pulling people from the fire. And that's what the word of God says we do when we teach the gospel. He says, as if it were pulling them from the fire. That's what I'm doing today, folks. There's some people here that I'm reaching with everything that I have. And if I die at the end of this message, so be it. As long as you'll be okay, that's all I care about. Because I believe in heaven and I'm not going to hell. But I don't want you to go there. I don't want it. There was obviously nothing that that young mother would not do to save her children from a burning inferno. How can we stand aside, uncaring, indifferent, unmoved, unresponsive while our family, our friends, our neighbors, acquaintances go to hell? Hell is real. Hell is forever hot. Hell is a place where people are ever dying, but they never die. It says the worm dieth not. It's been explained to me by many people. Our desires, we won't lose our desires. Everything, every desire that you have in your body right now, you'll have for eternity, but there won't be any way to satisfy. You'll be thirsty forever. You'll be hungry forever. You'll be tired forever. You'll be afraid forever. You'll be alone forever. Every bad feeling there is, we can't satisfy it. Because the Bible says that's the way it's going to be. Hell is an unthinkable pain and punishment. What are we doing to save our loved ones from spending eternity there? What are we doing about reaching the lost? I would present to you today, If we really believe in hell, we do whatever necessary to stop people from going there. But it's inconvenient, yes. It's expensive, yes. It's a sacrifice, yes. It's not necessarily fun to give all of our time to the dying lost of this world, I know. 
It's a lot of work. I'm only 35 years old. It takes a lot out of you, folks. That was a joke, by the way, world. I'm 57. It takes a lot out of you, and it should. The Bible says, except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abideth alone. Except there be something that dies inside of us. It's going to be all about us. It abides alone. It's all about the seed. It's all about me. Except I fall to the ground and die. It's only me. But when I die, I say, Lord, I'm tired. But I'm going to go and help somebody this afternoon. If we really don't believe in the second coming, we'll lose sight of living for Jesus day by day. We'll live from Wednesday to Sunday to Wednesday to Sunday, from church service to church service. Wow, he sure sounded mad today, didn't he? Oh, yeah, man, he was mad. I don't know what the problem is. I'm, you know, I'm trying to stay saved. I'm doing the best I can. That's not what I'm interested in. I don't want you to just be saved. I want you to help them not be saved. See what I'm saying? We want them to be saved. They're not saved. We need them. We need help. We need everyone to do whatever it takes. God, help me to do something in this world to make a difference. We'll lose the urgency to win the lost. If we don't re really believe in hell, we'll lose our fear of the consequences of sin. If we don't believe in hell, consequences don't mean anything. That's why this world is so messed up the way it is. We have the liberals, so to speak, always fighting against consequences for what they do. Why are we doing this? Because you violated the law. So what? Shouldn't it be according to what I desire? We'll lose our fear of consequences of sin and unfaithfulness. We'll lose our passion for reaching the lost. Believe it or not. Believe it or not. These two events are going to happen. Would you stand with me? Jesus, we felt your presence so powerfully in prayer before service. I believe there's a reason. You're trying to get our attention to stop flirting with the world. We are mandated by the word of God. We are mandated by the word of God. We are mandated by the word of God to not let the world be our influence. We are mandated to influence the world, not let them influence us. Does God have your attention yet? I hope so, because he's got mine. These two events and many more will happen because it's in the word of God. Lord Jesus, we come to you this morning. We're done early for a reason. You want time to talk to us some more. Lord, I may not understand what the word of God says, but I sure feel an urgency today in this room. I pray that your word would get a hold of every single person. God, I love preaching on miracles. I love preaching on saving. I love preaching on deliverance and healing and faith. I love preaching, God, on love and compassion, mercy and grace. I love doing that. But I can't avoid preaching all of your word. It is what it is. I can't change it, nor do I spiritually want to. The flesh feels like things are a little tight once in a while, but God, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. 
Help me today, Lord, to get into the Spirit. Help me to walk according to the Spirit and the Word. Help me, Jesus, to accept direction, biblical principles. What's it going to take, Jesus? What's it going to take to get my attention? What's it going to take? What's it going to take to make me live like you're really coming back again at a time that I don't know? And if I miss it, odds are pretty good. I've really missed it. This world is already lying to us, saying that there's going to be multiple chances. I don't believe it. I don't believe the Word of God teaches it. God, would you have mercy on us today? Would you help me get outside of my own thinking, my own passions and priorities, and help me to reach for you and say, Lord, help me to look at my life. Does it speak not just to my neighbor, but does it speak to you that you are my priority in spending eternity with you Spending eternity with you is the main goal in my life. And I want to take as many people as I can with me. I'm not mad at anybody, Jesus. But I need to get their attention more than the devil does. His voice is so loud these days and yet very subtle. Slowly rocks us to sleep. God, I'm trying to sound a trumpet before the trumpet. It's going to happen, believe it or not. Jesus is tugging at your heart today. If you don't know him, he wants you to. He's not scary. He's reaching out in love today. One day, it won't be. One day, it'll be judgment. But not today. Today he's reaching out, his hands outstretched. And he's saying, if you come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Mm, my burden is light. My burden is light. My burden is light. Do you feel his presence this morning? Would you respond to that? Just respond to that. Lord, wash my mind of these worldly endeavors. Oh God, I want to think your thoughts. I want to be led by the Spirit for they are the sons of God. I want to be led by your spirit, not by my flesh. I don't want to mix. I don't want to say, I don't want to be lost. You know, fear, fear can get your attention, but fear will never change you. It's love that will change you. I'm not trying to scare you today. I'm trying to get your attention. But it won't change you. The fact that there's a hell won't change you. But the fact that he is love and that he's giving you a chance to avoid it, that will change you. He's calling everyone in this place to take a step closer to him. You could show him that today by stepping closer, coming up to this altar and saying, Lord, I want to reach out to you. I want to talk with you today. I want to make sure. I may think I'm saved, but Lord, I just want to touch base with you. I want to make sure. If you don't know anything about what I'm talking about today, I'm asking you, take a chance. Take a chance and just walk up to this altar and just bow your head and pray to him. Just bow your head and think about him. Do something. But don't just stand there and ignore what he's saying. It's all in the scripture. It's going to happen. 
He said miracle signs and wonders are going to happen, and they do. He said there's going to be a baby born. It's going to be God with us, and it happened. There's, that baby's going to go to the cross and give his life for you. That happened. He's going to be raised again from the dead by his own power. That happened. What else in the Word of God shouldn't we believe in? We need to believe in it all. It's all going to happen. Jesus, deliver. Jesus, Jesus, we need you today. Let's worship. Let's pray. Jesus. Protect them today, Jesus. Don't let the devil steal away the seed. God, the fowls of the air will come by and try to steal the word of God away. Don't let them, Jesus. Not today. Jesus, I respond. Forgive me, Jesus. Forgive me, Jesus. Forgive me, Jesus. Let me be right with you, Lord. Let my heart be right with you, Jesus. Hallelujah.